uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome along to the South Waikato. Uh, well, actually, Rachel, your still says uh, Rotorua in terms oh, of the background. Sorry, oh Jesus, that's a bit. Yeah, well, Jesus. welcome along to the South Waikato. Sorry, I should have spotted that. There business you go. support webinar series. Um, okay. uh, so my name, as you can see on the screen, is Darren McGarvey, and I'm a co-founder and director of Fire Station. I'm joined by Rachel McGarvey who's also founder and director of Fire Station. We've got a couple of special guests joining us who I'll introduce in a moment. I do want to acknowledge, of course, the South Waikato Investment Fund Trust and the South Waikato District Council for their phenomenal support of these. This is uh, webinar number nine, if, we're, if I've been counting them correctly, which is awesome. Yes. Um, and uh, and that's just, that's just a show's amazing support um, of the uh, business community. Um, so just some reminders, we are videoing, so, um, you know, just if you get excited about tax or, you know, you might want to be tempted to use profanity when you're asking a question, but if you just restrain yourself, you know, that, that would be great. Um, but at the end of the day, it's your call. Uh, but you can use the chat function to ask questions. Um, and um, I see we already have a question regarding our vacuum cleaner. Um, yeah, that's a that's a topic for another. <laughs> There's a debate going on about the name of the robot. Anyway, vacuum cleaner. Um, what else? Oh, I was talking about. Yeah, so we're videoing these. Uh, they're all available on uh, South N or oh, SWNZ.co. Is that right? I got that right. Yes. SWNZ.co. So they're all there. You can go back and watch with the other eight. And there's lots of different topics, including growing revenue. Um, um, have we done marketing. We did marketing. Yeah, we did marketing. We've done. Um, HR, oh, hospitality. Hospitality, yeah, yeah. So they're um, all there. Retail. And this one will be there as well because I know there's a lot in this one to get through. So um, if you need to go back and rewatch it, you will be able to. Um, yeah, so chat for questions and, um, or just, it's a smaller group. So free, feel free to frantically wave at the camera uh, and just unmute yourself and ask a question. I'm sure that will be fine too. So today's topics. Um, and there's two or three of them. We, we, we set this up because, you know, they're, they're not sexy topics, but um, they are really uh, necessary. And I know they're things that you don't want to necessarily have to deal with or even face into, but they're, they're, they're very, very critical. And if you get them wrong, it can make a real, yeah, it can make a real impact on, on, you know, on your business now and, and in the future. So, um, we, yeah, we're very fortunate. We've been joined by uh, two from Graham Brown and Co. Chartered Accountants. So we've got Managing Director Debbie Gisby and uh, and then her co-pilot uh, Jasmine Vander Hayden, who's also a director. Uh, if you can see there as well. Um, so, um, the, so just in terms of time, we're aiming to hopefully do this in around an hour. We've gone over an hour in the past. Uh, not, not not necessarily this particular topic, but others as well. So if you have to duck away, don't worry, you know, we'll still be recording, but um, it may take a little while. There is a lot to get through. Um, and and that's about it, isn't it? Have I missed anything out? I don't think I have. All right, well, I'll, I'll stop talking because I can go on for a while. And I'm, I'm going to hand over to uh, Debbie. So welcome, Debbie, and, and the floor is yours. Great, thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so... I'm just going to quickly share my screen and away we go. So hopefully everybody can see that okay. Um, so yeah, thanks for letting us share what we know. Um, really hope that you find this useful. Um, there is a lot of information out there, more than we can cover in the time available. Um, going to try and do it in about half an hour, um, just because I think that's probably long enough to be talking um, tax. So to get the most out of this, we're just going to focus and highlight um, the measures that we're finding um, apply to most people and have so far had the most impact to our clients. So, um, so it is, um, uh, there, there is a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of misinformation out there. It's not really surprising, surprising given the speed in which some of this policy has had to be implemented, um, both for government and businesses. And it's, um, yeah, it's pretty hard to believe. It's only been, what, coming up eight weeks um, since this all started. So first up, we've got the wage subsidy. Um, by far, I think that's been probably the most um, widely 
um, used um, sort of measure that people have applied for. Um, we've also then got the, we'll talk about the working from home allowance, which um, has just come out. Some um, discussion about tax use of money, interest relief, and some changes to provisional tax. Um, COVID-19 trading stock, you know, how do you value your stock on hand at year end? Um, for many, they wouldn't have been in their business, so how do you go about that? Um, depreciation changes, low value assets, temporary loss addback scheme, which is, is out now. And we will touch on at the end, the small business cash flow loan scheme. So yeah, first up, the wage subsidy. So I'm going to make the assumption that probably everybody um, that's watching this webinar and people who are watching the recording later on probably have already applied um, on the basis that they were shut and we're fully expecting to have at least that 30% decline in any month between January 2020 and June 2020 because of COVID. Um, if you haven't applied, then suggest and you, have, you are one of those people who have been affected and you may have already got proof of, of that. Um, when you compare it to the previous year, then you do, you should go to work and income um, and check out um, if you can get it. Um, and there is a fairly simple process. In fact, it's, it's, it's crazily easy um, to apply for. Um, but if you, you know, if you get stuck, um, you know, um, yell out. We, we've got lots of links that we can share as well um, that um, throughout these notes and the body of the slides. So in the public slides that I've given to you, Rachel, um, that a lot of those in their notes have have the links. So I'm quite happy if that those slides get circulated with the links in them um, for people under that public document. So a um, couple of key things around, I'll just recap very, very quickly, just in case there is anybody. Um, you do have to have a 30% decline in any month between January 2020 and June 2020, expected or actual. Um, it's an employee basis, so you apply per person, casual or full-time. You have to be intending to retain the employee over that 12 weeks that um, you're applying for. It can include business owners as long as you work in the business and are um, you know, an employee. You do have to take active steps to reduce the impact of COVID-19 on your business. Um, and it's come, it came out as a 12-week lump sum payment. So... Um, the, the key issue around that taking active steps is I'm going to flag that in a, in a, in a, in a little bit. Um, it, there is a bit of a catch with that that we're sort of finding. It also applies um, to the leave subsidy as, as well. And they have started auditing on, on that particular topic. So the leave subsidy is the other one. Really similar. Um, there is a new updated scheme from the 1st of May. It's no longer just essential workers because, of course, we're a lot of people in Level 2 are, are back. Um, employees have to be able to you know, have that, meet that test. They cannot work from home. Um, you do not have to meet the 30% decline criteria under this one, but only if COVID-19 health restrictions have had such an impact um, on your on your business, you can't support your employee to take leave, and they and they meet all the other criteria. So, um, for example, they might be under the Ministry of Health COVID guidelines. They might might qualify as at risk. They may be in forced isolation, as in um, you know they've been in contact with somebody with COVID nineteen, or they have COVID nineteen themselves. Um, so. It is one of this is more of a health, uh, an HR kind of um, falls into the, the employment um, act. Um, normal employer obligations still apply here under the ERA. You have to act fairly and in good faith, so you can't just force people to be off work, um, you know, if and, 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 and um, take this subsidy. You're meant to actually talk to them, so um, still make sure you follow good. Um, health, you know, employer obligations there. So um, that's for a full four weeks. So slightly different. You don't get paid out 12 weeks. You get paid for four. So um, the questions that are coming through now, because like I said, we've had a lot of people who have already applied um, and there are some themes. So I'll touch on those um, common questions. So one of the most common questions we're being asked right now is whether you have to pay it back or not. Can I still claim? Um, this is not surprising because the people are asking this because now people are back at work. They may no longer expect to be 30% down. 
but th this is the key thing here. It on you only need one month or a four week period for this statement still to be true. And if it's still true, then you still qualify. So if, for example, you were shut right through April and you had no turnover, no revenue, um, and the year before you were fully trading at that same time, I would expect then you qualify. So it's not a problem going forward that you're trying to get back to work and trying to make um, the business come right, that's okay. You actually have an obligation to try and minimize your losses going forward. So um, that's absolutely fine. Doesn't mean you have to repay. Um, then the next question is, is for new businesses um, that aren't, are now concerned that they haven't traded for 12 months, they've gone and applied and then kind of sat back and read the rules, but more carefully, and this has kind of happened, it was done in a rush. Um, I've had really high growth this year because I've expanded my services or um, perhaps I didn't have trading last year, I haven't got a comparable. Um, you can, if you're a new business, still calculate the 30% decline in revenue using a similar month or any 30 day period within the tw last 12 months of trading. So for example, comparing February 2020 to March 2020. So what you may be able to reasonably say you could have expected to have done if it weren't for COVID-19. Um, so, yeah, so that's a question mark with that. And, and if it all concerned, you know, you can ring that number, talk to them direct, um, or, or talk to your advisor about, um, which is, would be your own accountant, about, um, you know, having a look and, and putting some stuff on file for you in case it does get looked at. Um, I've received insurance cover for costs covered by the subsidy. Yes, you probably will. If the insurance cover is specifically to cover wage costs, then all or some of this might be repayable. Um, I've made my employees redundant. So if you cannot retain them as you have been obligated to, and remember you have signed um, a, a, a disclosure or a declaration to say that you intended to keep those employees for that 12 weeks. Um, if you can't keep them, then you can use that money to pay out the notice period but not the redundancy payments. That's, you've got to be very careful about that. Um, any balance um, you may have to repay to um, MSD, and you, so you do need to advise them. And the number's at the bottom of, uh, of the screen there that to advise them. And there is a repayment form online, which again will be in the links if you want a copy of the, um, the public slides and the notes. Um, now, if they resign voluntarily, um, you can use the balance to cover the rest of your employees and other wage costs over that period. You do still need to tell MSD so they can update their records, um, but you don't necessarily have to repay. So, um, so, you know, basically, and you don't have to pay them out the balance. If they've resigned, you do your normal payouts and then you advise MSD and ring that number. Um, if you've claimed twice an error or made a mistake on the form, then yes, you do need to get in contact with MSD and, and, and complete the WINS repayment form online. Um, so I've put some links again in the, in the um, slides. So um, for those of you who aren't sure where those repayment forms can be found, um, and again, they're pretty easy to, to fill out. It's kind of just the reverse of what you did when you applied. Um, and I think the, the so far feedback has been, they've been dealt with pretty quickly. So, Next up um, is for um, what else is, what other questions are we getting around the wage and the leave subsidy? Um, so is the, am I meant to pay 585.80 to my employees? So some people have been doing that. Well, it's actually the gross amount. You're meant to have taxed it um, first. Um, and it's not necessarily 585.80, of course you're paying. You should have been trying to pay them 80% of their normal wages. Um, and if you're using a payroll system, then pretty much all of the payroll programs out there have released guides um, on how to process it through your payroll. Again, talk to your, your, your accountant if you're concerned about that, or um, ring, you know, if you're using MYOB, ring them direct um, to, to walk you through it. They've got help desks. Um, for the business who is receiving the subsidy, so for example, if your business has received $7,029.60 per employee, um, then the, you do need to know the wage subsidy is passive income for ACC purposes. So it sits as other income in your tax return. And many people right now will be looking to do their year-end returns and some of this leave subsidy or wage subsidy will 
hit their returns, it isn't accessible for ACC, so it doesn't, it falls into a different part of the tax return. Um, and yeah, do, do go onto the website, at the IRD, for more info um, if you need. It has no GST either, so, um, and it also, you have to apply um, the spreading rules around that. So what that means is you only have to declare in say the 2020 year, and let's say your March balance date, like Bob is on the screen, um, Bob only needs to account for the days that relate to that year and he can defer declaring the rest of that wage subsidy as income in, in the next financial year. So, um, and this is because the IRD's um, position is that it's, these payments qualify as compensation um, under the Act and so they can be returned in the income year, um, which is, which is you know, matching up against the expense, really. So it's income is replacing an expense, um, and, and the two things line up. So obviously, with Bob, he's got the rest of his weeks, you know, are going into 2021 and not accessible for quite some time. Um, and, yeah, just to highlight again, um, audits have started. Um, so we are aware that already um, MSD, working with MBIE, um, uh, starting to um, go through the list where they've received complaints. So, you know, they're not at the moment, as far as we are, it's kind of too early, they're not assessing on the 30% revenue down um, criteria because we haven't got to June yet. <clears throat> so it's a little too early to try and um, check all of that. But what they'll be looking at is if you haven't retained, if you've had a complaint laid against you, for example, from an employee who you've maybe um, made redundant and then you've actually claimed the wage subsidy for them, but you haven't passed it on or told MSD and paid it back, um, they'll be looking at, you know, um, have you taken all reasonable steps to try and minimise the impact of COVID-19 so that you could afford to do that? Because if you, for example, gone and drawn out a lot of money out of your business, um, made the person redundant and then said, oh, I've got no cash left, but you've gone and paid yourself, I don't think that the... Um, the you know MSD um, or IRD or any of the government departments that are looking at this stuff would would um, think that you've taken all reasonable steps to minimise the impact to your cash flow. So that's why that is really really important that you do um, need to try and do your best and um, you know things like trying to get your your rent down or um, minimise your outgoings to try and reduce your cash flow costs. Um, you know do what you can to try and minimise the impact. Um, and try and keep those employees on. So, and if you think you've got a problem now, best, best, um, best thing to do is really contact MSD on that number <coughs> that we that I showed you earlier. So, um, <coughs> I don't know if we need to answer any questions just yet. I'm, I'm assuming you'll you'll um, um, call out or stop me in the middle, um, Rachel or, or Darren. Yeah. If I need to stop. We've just had a question come in. Um, I don't know whether you can see the chat function. Um, no, I can't actually. Oh, okay. That's cool. because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a smart accountant at a lot of things, but I'm not, not that tech savvy. <laughs> okay, well, I will, I will read it out to you. Um, yep. I had three employees of a new startup business. Seeing the tsunami coming, I made them redundant. The two notice period ended three days before the government announced the wage subsidy. Can I re-employ them and claim the subsidy? I would like to get going again. Yeah. Now there is definitely um, um, there is definitely the ability to look to do that. You do need to contact um, MSD around that though, because there is some uh, and, and making sure that you've actually taken the right steps and in these um, you've got all the information that they need to be able to justify reinstating them. So that, I know that that has happened to a lot of people and it's been a problem. So if, if your advisor is not able to help you directly as in your accountant is not able to sit down and go through what you, how, what process you've gone through um, and how to go and, and deal with this, then you, yeah, the best course is to ring MSD, explain what's happened because that is actually quite a common thing. So um, in some cases, um, I'm aware that people have been able to kind of um, undo that. So, my, you know, the people do need to have been employed, properly employed before COVID hit, of course. You know, you've got to be able to show um, evidence of, um, of this. So, but it, it's not uncommon. Um, 
And the other thing which I didn't touch on as well, um, it's probably worth mentioning, is um, around the, the leave form that was in existence right at the beginning. So right at the start of the announcement, they actually had two forms online. One of them didn't really work properly. It was actually a leave form, but it didn't really apply once everyone went into lockdown. They unfortunately left it up on their website for about four days. Um, and in that time, lots of people applied under that form thinking it was their right form to apply for and only ended up getting two weeks of pay and they thought they'd applied for the wage subsidy, which was meant to be 12 weeks. So they only got two weeks. So um, basically, WINS MSD came out and said, if you have incorrectly got that, once that two weeks is up, you were able to go back and apply for the full wage, wage subsidy again. Okay, so if that's happened to you, you can go and apply for the wage subsidy if you've never had technically that 12 weeks, okay? Um, and um, if you're concerned about having to pay back that first two weeks that you have, do contact them. Um, so there's, you know, at the moment, um, anybody that I've had or have been aware of that has contacted them hasn't had to pay it back. Um, but that may be just simply because they kind of knew there was going to be an extension happening in this next budget, which I'll talk to you later. Okay, so good. Um, Working from home allowance. So um, this is relatively new as well. So basically the IRD have come out um, with a with an, an extra perk in here to try and um, comp well, it's not really a perk because actually it should be reimbursing for reasonable costs that people are having at home. Um, so it's for it's for payments to cover reasonable at home at home costs, um, and these can be tax free to the employees if you meet certain conditions. So they're deductible to the employer. So I don't know if people watching if you're familiar with what a tax free allowance is. It's basically tax free to the employee. You don't have to take tax out of it, but you can claim it as a deduction um, as from the business perspective, from the employer perspective. Um, so you can include power, phone, office tools. You can either make a reasonable estimate of this and you have to keep some records or you can use their standard and their standard is basically $20 a week, um, no questions asked um, and that can be paid on top of their regular pay to compensate people for being at home. So, so that's um, quite an, a, a nice bonus for um, employees who are you know, having to um, work, work at home and use their own resources, I guess, to keep the business going. So it is a, just to, I guess, um, qualify that though, you don't have to pay this. This is not something that's been directed for you to do. So if cash flow is really, really tight and you can't afford to do it, you wouldn't be doing it, you know. Um, okay. So the next thing, we're going to head into some gnarly tax stuff. Um, and I am, I'm going to try and keep this pretty um, brief because it, it, it can get a, a bit like hard work when you're, when you're talking tax topics. So um, the first thing is there have been some concessions made. The top one is, is really the provisional tax threshold has moved from two and a half grand to five grand. Now what that means is that those people who currently pay provisional tax um, may not need to into the coming year. So um, it's a permanent change. It's taking effect now um, as of 1st of April 2020. So for example, if you normally have tax of three and a half grand, and, and you, let's say you had tax of three and a half grand when you do your 2020 um, accounts, um, you will no longer have to pay provisional tax into the coming year. So that means that um, because it's under that $5,000 new threshold, you'll basically pay your three and a half grand tax and you won't have to pay any more until you do your next lot of tax accounts, which will be, say, March 2021, and then it'll depend on the result from that year. So that's um, basically keeping more money in the taxpayers' um, hands and not passing it through early, I guess, to the IRD. Um, there's also some tax relief in terms of under the COVID um, criteria around deferrals and payments plan, payment plans. So um, if you're unable to pay your tax, um, and this was effective from really the beginning um, of the year, it's after 14th of February 2020 this applied, um, from that date onwards, really, anybody who couldn't pay their, say, 7th of May tax, or if you're going to struggle paying your 28th of August first provisional, and you 
and you're not in a position to have draft accounts ready or anything like that, then you can contact the IRD, advise them your business is unable to pay it tax, its taxes on time due to the impact of COVID-19 um, and, and talk to them about a potential date in the future where you can come back to it or start paying some tax. Um, generally, to set this arrangement up, um, the IRD need to know, yep, it's because of COVID-19 and when you need, um, you know, time to, to let, so some people it's August, some people it's September, um, and they're not really asking any questions at this stage, so what we're finding is um, they're accepting that, um, they're probably pretty stretched, so that could be why, um, but do be prepared at the other end of that, uh, if you want to ask for the, the interest and penalty remission, which is the next part of this, because under COVID-19, not only can they remit penalties, but also this can be interest-free, this deferral, um, you might need some more information at that point. And that's what we're expecting to have to do with a lot of people is that people who have deferred, we probably will have to do um, a, a little bit of a review to make sure that we can either estimate something or look at the other provisions and apply maybe the temporary loss and back scheme, um, those sort of things, which I'll talk to a little bit later. Um, so there's also some concessions around overdue returns. The IRD is still expecting you to to file and pay your GST and PAYE on time um, because they need that to be able to track both your business and the wider economy. However, if you are having issues with your year-end process because of COVID-19, you, you're best to either send them a secure mail, uh, probably don't try and call them because they're pretty hard to get hold of or the phone lines I'm told drop off routinely. Um, give, send them secure mail through my IR or talk to your accountant. Um, you know, they're very aware that COVID-19 has had a major impact on business um, and this includes affecting how you do your bookkeeping at year end. Um, so the next part um, on depreciation on commercial buildings. So this is something that's come back in. Before 2011, we used to be able to depreciate buildings, which was a good sort of bit of tax relief. Um, it's been, since 2011, it's been 0%. The new depreciation rates going forward will be 2% um, and 1.5, depending on your method of depreciation. This does not cover residential buildings, so okay, it's only commercial properties that this applies to. So that's that's good bit of tax relief. It's pretty small, and we won't feel the effect of that um, for a little while, but but it's still good all the same. Um, they've also increased the asset threshold from the 17th of May 20, uh, 17th of March 2020. So that means if you have bought any assets between the 17th of March and the 31st of March, that you, we can apply that test and up to $5,000 we can put straight to expenses. So if you bought a laptop, for example, that was $2,000 um, on the 20th of March, fantastic that will be expensed as or should be expensed as or can be expensed as opposed to put onto your asset schedule and spread over the lifetime of that asset so that's a really good tax thing what they're trying to do with that is encourage people i guess to go and replace assets and spend a little bit into the economy so for the next 12 months until the 17th of march 21 um, you know, now's a good time to go and buy, replace your computers. Um, if, if you've got cash flow that you can afford to do this, okay? So just to qualify that, um, don't spend money you don't have. But um, if you've got assets that you are thinking about replacing, if you're under that $5,000 threshold, they'll be expensed. So that's, that's good news. And then after 17th of March, that'll pop back up to the $1,000. So a new higher threshold where it was 500. So good stuff. Um, COVID-19 trading stocks, I mentioned this earlier, um, many people couldn't get into their businesses right on year end to do their stock takes, so the IRD is allowing you to do a late stock take, so people will be in there now, you can do your stock take now, um, if it, or as soon as it's practical to do so, no later than 31st of May 2020. Now you can still, if it's under 10 grand, you can still estimate, okay, so you don't need to, um, physically count everything but over 10 grand you still need to have records of a physical stock take you've got till 31st of May 2020 to do that and you do need to go back and re try and reconstruct what it would have been in March using any post balance date sales and purchases if you can so that you know if you if you end up being really busy up until May please don't leave it till May because otherwise you've got two months where you've got to try and reconstruct it back to to March okay 
So um, how are we going for time, Rachel? We all right? Yeah, well, it's yeah. 10.36, right. so, yep, just yeah. keep on. Okay, hopefully everyone's still awake. <laughs> all good. <laughs> Next. Next is temporary loss addback scheme. Okay, so this is um, this is a good one, and this is why probably from um, from my point of view with my own clients um, and um, and I'm sure other accountants are probably taking a similar sort of view to this is when we're talking about deferrals of provisional tax, we've got this in the back of our mind, the temporary loss addback scheme, because for some people who who may have had an amazing 2020 year and a lot of people did. And then it's taken a dive off the cliff for 21. If you're going to end up in a loss for 2021, this new scheme gives us the ability to take that loss back and reduce your 2020 answer. Because otherwise, you can imagine it's a bit like having a roller coaster. Your 2020 is right up here um, at the top of the, the hill, huge tax bill. And then 21 is, is at the other end um, in the valley. And, and this gives you the ability to smooth it um, so you don't have those that huge mountain and, and, um, and huge valley at the other side. So smooth your tax. Um, you, ca you can adjust your 2020 provisional tax to, re to reflect the de decrease in taxable income once you've done your assessment, say, and you might look at it in August and see how things are going for your 2021 year. Um, you've got a few months trading. If it looks like you have a big decrease and you've paid provisional already that's sitting there, you can, for 2020, you can get some of that back. You can re-estimate as many times as you need to up, the up to the time you file your 2020 income tax return. Um, depending on the type of provisional tax scheme you're in, or you know you've got different types of methods um, for provisional tax, um, you may have to deal with this differently. So do talk to your accountant or you know your your tax advisor about what what scheme you're under if you're um, confused. We are, we'll send you through the links um, that are on the IRD around this scheme as well, which has some specifics in it. Um, but but you do need to probably take advice depending on your scheme. Um, you can, so if you're carrying, claiming a carry back in 2019 for the 2020 year, so this is a two year thing, you can only go back one year, but you can also go back right back to the 19 year with your 20 year um, return as well. So if you do that, you will need to reassess your 19 year return to include your losses and any overpaid tax will be refunded. So it's a sort of two year um, look, a, a two year scheme, I guess, but only a one year look back. So 2020 losses can be carried back to 20, 2019 or 2021 losses can be carried back to 2020. And so you, you can't carry them back two years, but, but only the once. Um, it is a pretty, um, potentially a pretty good thing for people, like I said, who have had, um, you know, a, a nosedive off the cliff and suddenly are looking at having losses when they've traditionally paid lots of tax. Um, watch out though, if your estimates are wrong, um, you can't apply the COVID concessions um, and you will pay you some money interest on, on those errors. Okay, so um, be, very, be very mindful about that. You should take advice around this um, and not sort of do it wildly, I guess. Um, next up, um, Rachel, I'm assuming there's no questions around that. That's a... No, not yet anyway. Anyone? Good. So I just thought I'd touch on very um, quickly the budget announcement, just because um, this, you know, it's very, very topical, and many of you would have watched it um, and to see what's in it for, for, your, for your business. Um, they have announced as part of this a 50 billion COVID-19 response and recovery fund, um, which is intended to, um, and then this is, off the Beehive um, statement, to protect jobs, create jobs, provide um, retraining support, um, help with business survival, to, so existing businesses to keep them going, and target specific sectors most affected. Um, now, I'm not going to go into all of that because some of this is, um, you know, it sits in HR as well. There's trades and apprenticeship training packages that are coming out. There's um, uh, 8,000 public house build program um, to try and boost productivity and create jobs. There's, there's all sorts of um, stuff in there, but I guess that just sticking with the theme um, 
and, th and that I covered wage subsidy early on, there is an extension to the wage subsidy. Um, we don't have all the detail yet. Um, however, the, basically what we do know right now is it will be open for applications for a 12 week period. It will be paid as an eight week sum lump sum to employers at the same weekly rates as the current wage scheme, which of course is 585.80 for a full-time employee or $350 um, for a part-time employee. It's um, basically, other, the other key things to know is open from the 10th of June. Um, there's a new threshold around it. So from 10th of June, 2020, businesses that have suffered or expected to suffer revenue loss of at least 50% for the 30 day period prior to you applying, so prior to that application date, compared to the next comparable um, period, so last year, comparing it directly against last year, you'll be eligible, but it's 50%, okay? Um, new firms will also be um, able to apply under the same kind of criteria that I talked about before. Um, and they're also expanding um, eligibility to include pre-revenue um, R&D startup firms. So research and development firms that maybe don't have any revenue at, at the moment. If you're recognized by the Callahan in Innovation or you fit that criteria and you're sitting in that, then you might be able to look at this. So. Um, yeah, so this is, this is um, good because we really do need, um, you know, this to carry on for a bit longer because there are still a, a, many businesses who can't, even at level two, are, are really struggling, particularly if you're in hospitality um, or, or tourism, of course, it's a, level two is potentially a non-event for you. So, um, so that, that's good. Um, for if you want to check out um, more information around that in particular, there is already stuff on the um, IRD website. There's also stuff at budget.gov.nz or um, at beehive.gov.nz as well. Um, and on the WINS website, they've already released um, a, little, a little bit of information. So um, there is already information starting to be circulated, which is great. Um, so I will go on to next. The business, our small business cash flow scheme. So, um, we've had we've had quite a lot of um, inquiry. Or, well, like, can I apply? Is this something that would be useful for me? You know, from our own clients. Um, this latest measure um, that's been put out there is is again trying to assist businesses and, and organisations that are struggling due to actual or predicted loss um, due to COVID nineteen. Um, the, the comment at the time when they released it um, was that they didn't, hadn't really felt that the um, guarantee scheme that had been run through banks was particularly successful. I know in our own experience, um, I, I'm, I'm not aware of one client um, um, that I've dealt with that has been able to apply because they just haven't met that criteria under the guarantee scheme. So it really, um, it, was, it was a bit... Um, hopeless, to be honest. Um, so this this has been brought out um, to try and deal with that so they can get money to people. So it's a one-off loan. Um, applications um, are now open from the 12th of May 2020, and they're only open apparently until the 12th of June 2020. You, your organisation, um, your business must have 50 or fewer full-time equivalent employees um, to be able to qualify. The maximum loan in amount is 10000 so everybody gets 10, the 10,000 plus 1,800 per full-time equivalent employee. The interest rate will be 3% from the date the loan is provided to you. Um, now, if you repay that within one year fully, then it's interest-free. Um, otherwise, it needs to be fully repaid within five years from the date the loan is made available to you. The IRD are running this scheme, so they're administering both um, the application process um, the payments and repayments um, of the scheme. It comes with terms and conditions. Um, and it, the, the only other thing I will say, because I will, I will shortly hand this to Darren, because he's um, from his background, can add some more to this. Um, or the only other thing I'd say is that it, they have made a proviso in there. It has to be used for core operating costs. So I've already had people ask whether they can buy, um, you know, a, a new van or, um, you know, an assets with it. 
Now that wouldn't really qualify as a core operating cost, so you could have a problem there. It's meant to be used um, for things such as rent, rates and other day-to-day -day operating expenses. It's meant to, I guess, complement the wage subsidy in that respect. You've already got that to cover your employees or help with your employees. Um, it should not be used to pay shareholders' drawings or dividends. Um, so be very careful um, around that. Um, it's effectively the same test as the wage subsidy um, test and that um, includes that you have to um, confirm in the application process that your business organisation is likely to experience or has experienced a minimum 30% decline in revenue any month between January 2020 and June 2020. So effectively the same criteria. And I think I've put some links again on the public slides around this because there is a, there is a handy um, um, eligibility tool that, that I found that you just basically, it's a, a, a PDF document that you walk through online and go yes, yes, no, no, and find out whether you can um, apply for it. So um, I'll hand over to you now, um, Darren, to add some more to that. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Debbie. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so I was just looking at that slide. Yeah, so I was previously, um, I'm in a previous life, BNZ Managing Partner for this region and uh, um, it perked my interest, uh, obviously not just um, for on behalf of our clients, but also just seeing what the, the government had come up with. You know, it is, it is quite broad. Um, and, you know, I would never suggest, you know, applying for something in, in a disingenuous way, but, you know, I'm quite aware that many businesses apply for money from banks for a kitchen renovation and it goes into the business to keep it afloat. Um, so, you know, this, this is, this is designed to do that is to keep you afloat. Uh, it is, you know, it's, it is, um, one of the hooks in it though, is when you read through the, the agreement, um, it's fairly broad and what they term as a default. In fact, any information you neglect to share or you share f information in the future that they deem to be, oh, hang on, that's not what you said. Um, like it's incredibly broad and they can put you in default for just about anything. And that includes information sharing between government agencies where they see something where somewhere else they don't like. Um, and that could then, of course, impact on your um, your credit score uh, as, as well. So, and then the other thing we, Debbie and I were just talking about um, before we got on the call was um, uh, if you're a bigger business um, and you borrow a bit more from a bank, you often have something called covenants, which are conditions on the lending. And some of those things can apply to um, taking on additional debt, um, you know, things like not paying dividends or, or a, you know, debt to equity ratio sort of thing. And, and so it's something to think about, um, perhaps talking to your bank, if you, particularly if you borrow from um, a bank and for a business, but maybe even, um, personally and making, just making sure that they're, um, they're comfortable as well. You know, and that's a decision you'll need to make, but you'll find in any bank, um, on any form from any bank, pretty much it says you must convey at all times any information they may deem to be material to your financial circumstances. So this obviously would include uh, borrowing under this scheme as well. Um, yeah, so that's that's a bit of a, so you talk to your accountant or, uh, or financial advisor um, uh, on that topic. Right. Well, I, I was I was going to do a little bit on uh, the business debt hibernation and uh, safe harbour, but I think given the time, I think we'll just park that perhaps for a future one. But there's perhaps just very quickly, you know, you know, if you haven't seen, there is legislation. Um, there's a bill been introduced um, to propose that uh, you can um, park debt uh, or you know money owed to creditors or suppliers. Um, for up to seven months um, and you can also be um, as a director of your company or a trustee of a trust as in fact there's a range of different entities this applies to um, you know you can be protected from trading whilst insolvent because of, directly because of this COVID crisis so um, that does give uh, directors and um, those running businesses a little bit of leeway around this um, but I would always recommend talking to a commercial lawyer. We were hoping to have one on this, but we couldn't, we tried two. We just couldn't get them tied down, unfortunately. 
Um, but uh, yeah, and but it's it's and it's still not law yet anyway. So perhaps we'll pick that up um, if it's appropriate at a future date. So that's about it. Have we got any other questions? Has anyone seen any other questions? I can't see anyone. Does anyone have any questions they want to ask before we uh, wrap up? No. No, you um, must have either shocked them all into silence or answered all their questions. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fairly meaty thing to have to deal with on a Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning, right, to be fair. So, um, look, I just want to thank you guys very much for um, having us. And, if, um, you know, I realise this will go out as a recording as well. So if anybody does have any, any questions, yet, absolutely talk to your advisors. Um, there is also, um, and it just quickly flag, there is business support funding available. Um, a memo. Yeah. yeah. It's um, run out. Oh, is it gone? Even for it's our, gone. Yeah. Shoot. So, okay. Sorry, I'll just jump in because it was announced yesterday to all the oh, providers. Oh, no, really? Yeah, so the free 100% subsidised uh, coaching is the funds have been exhausted. They believe there's got enough people that have registered that are in the process of getting vouchers that there are no there's no more funders under that. Gosh, that went quick, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, and and our advice to everyone was apply and get a voucher and yeah. so that you've got it. And um, unfortunately, if you didn't do follow we, that, sorry, do we know if that applies to Bay of Plenty as well, or is that it's nationwide? Nationwide. Yeah. Nationwide, um, they've advised all service providers that there are no more, um, yeah. they are not taking on any more registrations for the free. There yeah. has always been a 50% subsidy voucher scheme, yep. and that is still up and running. So um, if you desperately need help, there is the option that you can actually part pay and the government stumps up up to 50%. So um, worthwhile investigating that at the very least, because at least it's something to help you with the cost of getting the advice that you need. Absolutely. And from what I can see from that too, there is a, an educational training element to that. So there's yep. actually a lot of areas that that falls into. So, um, you know, I'm aware that there are people that not only need, have needed a bit of financial assistance or upskilling, but there's also been a need for, um, you know, them to upskill in terms of their um, their marketing or their online presence and so they're, they're, if that's still available um, around yeah then that's you know it's a good investment um, you know and if you're not fully at work then maybe you have the time to do that right now so yeah good stuff thank you very much for having us um, now if anybody's got any questions for um, us you know you're more than welcome to, to call our office or email us um, grahambrown.co.nz the website and a lot of these items that we've talked about are in the news, um, the news section of our website as well. We're posting updates to that. So, um, you know, you can go back and get a little bit more fleshed out information from there too. Cool. Um, we have just had a oh, yeah. Julie's just asked a question regarding um, the use of income equalisation scheme to, uh, if your provisional tax has been overpaid to limit use of money interest, he said is an option available to you um, talk to your accountants about how that works if you're not not familiar with it i think it's still only is it open only still open only to farming people in farming horticulture so it's not open to retail um hospitality that sort of business the primary industry scheme right cool very good. All right. So on, on that note, um, so just remind you, we have videoed this will be on, on that website. I mentioned swnz.co. Uh, we're back on Tuesday at 11, not 10 at 11 AM with uh, Hamilton and Waikato tourism. So um, that's specifically obviously looking to help those tourism businesses, but um, you know, anybody in a, you know, has affected by tourism probably is worth dialing into that. So we've got, I think Jason, isn't it? We've got Jason, yeah, Jason Definitely. Dawson, who's mm. the chief executive of um, Waikato and Hamilton Tourism. And, and the focus is, is, you know, how to pivot to attract the domestic audience. So um, anyone who relies on tourism, um, client tourism to uh, get their clientele should, should dial into that one. Yeah, yeah, excellent. All right, well, that's, I think that's, a, uh, that's enough from us. So... Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Have a nice weekend. The weather looks good. Get outside and uh, we might see you on our next Tuesday morning. So thanks very much and have a good one.